All right, what up, everybody? It's your boy, BQ. Welcome back to the channel. We're going to talk about this TNA rebrand. Uh, I want to say first and foremost, I do recognize over the last several weeks, I've been having issues with my Wi-Fi connection and that my uh, podcasts have not been of the best audio quality. And there's been, you know, audio cutting out and lagging. And I, for the life of me, cannot get to the bottom of it because I pay for the top speed. I pay for extra data. This is actually my third Wi-Fi, or excuse me, yeah, I guess Wi-Fi internet provider since I've moved to Las Vegas in July. No matter what the strength is, the upload and download speed, we just have issues. I don't know what it is. I will get to the bottom of it. I don't know how this audio is coming out right now. Might sound good, might sound like shit. Um, but we're going to get into this. I did try to make some adjustments that I hope will make some improvements. And hopefully this will be a better listener experience for you. But we're going to talk this rebrand here, kind of get your guys' thoughts on what you think has been good, what you think has been bad. If you like it more than you did in the in the past, you know, the past few years, I will say for the sake of, I just want to get it out there now so I'm not contradicting myself because I am going to say some negative things. I'm enjoying what they're doing significantly more right now than I have been over the last several years. So I got to I got to get that out there right away. I do recognize they've made more good changes than um, they haven't made any bad changes, but they've ignored some things. There's been some things they have not fixed, but I will say there's more on the positive side than on the, the negative side there. I was listening to I, every blue moon. I listen, if you know the podcaster, Don Tony, um, every blue moon, I check his stuff out. He, he doesn't. He covers a little TNA, but you know, these bigger podcasters, they know that TNA is not where the clicks are at, not where the views and the ad revenue. So they just don't watch it or cover it. So he covers it a little bit. Um, so I respect him for that. And he had said he reached out to some people within TNA and that all these reports coming out about budget and all that, like, yeah, that was part of it. But he was saying that Anthem is basically looking at the results, looking at the numbers, you know, saying, Hey, we did this big rebrand. There was this big social media push. Um, we brought in this guy and this girl and the numbers come out and they're not any better. I think this last episode episode did something like 85,000 or last week's episode, something like that. And I think, I think it was last week's episode. And I believe the target demo came up 0.00, .00 like it didn't even register. What this tells me is that the majority of the people watching this show are the people who have been watching since day one and just kind of never gave up on TNA. It tells me that they're doing very little to attract the younger audience. T TW and myself on the cool factor used to always say, who is their target audience? Do they know who the target audience is? When they're bringing in Ken Shamrock, RVD, um, Sandman, Rhino, who's still with the company, uh, still trying to you know hang their hat on the nostalgia of ECW. Um, they brought Charlie Haas in for a match. I'm trying to think who else. I mean, just these this, these older wrestlers. And we've sat here and we say, who is, who's their target fan? Who are they trying to attract with this? It just seems like everything is geared towards the people who already watch the show and aren't going anywhere. Kind of like what AEW does where they have like that weird indie niche fan base. They just, uh, uh, you know, appeal to that fan base. And it seems like that's the focus on TNA a lot of the time too. Now I will say, they do take some swings. They take some home run swings every once in a while and then try to shake things up. But I, I think we could argue for the most part, this show is aimed at an older audience. And they've done little to, to improve that. And another thing TW and I used to always say was that there was a whole demographic out there that doesn't remember the dark days of TNA. And, and that demographic now falls into the key demo they're not we're not talking about 10 11 12 13 year olds you know um 
I, I used I told some stories about my kids and I and my wife going to AEW the other day. Now my kids, uh, they've watched wrestling with me. You know, we we watch TNA together, WWE. When we watch that AEW, we've my son and I've gone to a couple NWA shows. We do indies. Okay, I've said all these things before, but my point is, my kids will tell you TNA is the best company of them. And they have no horse in the race. They know that I cover the company, but they have no horse in the race. They know nothing about Bischoff and Hogan, um, that AJ Styles was there at one point. They know nothing. They just watch everything as, as wrestling fans. And they've always enjoyed it more. Um, my previous relationship before my wife, uh, this was you know several years ago, I was sitting on the couch watching um, TNA. At, uh, this is when we moved from Florida to Illinois and um, we were staying with, you know, I call them my in-laws for the sake of argument. We were staying with them for a little bit till we got a place. I was watching TNA and, you know, um, my ex's father who dogs everything about professional wrestling. Um, and I was watching a little WWE back then as well. He would always be making fun of it and da, da, da. And the day that I had TNA on, he was like, I prefer this to that other stuff you watch. So the, the, my point is, these are people without the, without a horse in the race. And granted, he's older. He's not the target de- demographic. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying there is a world out there of people who just don't remember the dark times. And I don't think they've done a good enough job reaching those people. You know, can just consistently... On their YouTube, I understand the YouTube revenue. I get it. Okay, I'm not an idiot, but just constantly relying on the library. And for just just up until last year, there was a segment. What damn near playing an entire match in the middle of an Impact episode, and it's showing improved. I mean, when the, it's showing better times. The lighting was better. The wrestling was better. That the, and they've just continued to to really focus on the past, especially when the past was so much better than, than I, I, you, you can argue, is it better than what they're doing right now? I mean, it's all everyone's, everyone's taste, but for the most part, the past has been better with they, than what they've been doing the last several years. So I just don't think there's been enough, enough focus on just getting out to people who just were unfamiliar with them and bringing in the WWE retreads, you know, like they they've been doing good entertaining shows. That's not what I'm saying, but I just don't think they're doing enough to get new eyeballs on the product or whatever strategy they think they're using or think is working just isn't. So I'm gonna circle back to what Don Tony said is that it's basically about the results and the numbers, and that the numbers are frankly going down because they are. I think they got a little bit of a bump with Trinity. And things were kind of stabilized when she was around. But, you know, for the most part, we're not seeing that big, that big jump. Um, I do think the fa- the fan base is growing, though. I do. It's just this, the numbers. There's nothing tangible that they're seeing to say, hey, the, the company's growing. And when you got guys like Anthem that know Jack about wrestling, they just they can't wrap their minds around why we're not getting hey if AEW is doing on their shit show 300,000 why why are we not doing that you know especially when they were on pop tv they were doing those numbers and i don't want to hear well people watch tv differently these days that's true but if it's compelling someone will watch it as it airs and i've said many times i haven't watched a live episode of tna like as that airs I've maybe twice in the last three years. It's not to say I don't like what they're doing or it's not a negative thing. It's just, even though I may enjoy the episodes, there's nothing compelling enough for me to like not spend time with my wife or do something with my kids that night. Or if the, like the, if the Clippers are playing, that's always precedence over anything. That's, um, I'm a much bigger basketball fan than I am a wrestling fan. So that's always going to take precedence. Um, 
there's there just hasn't been anything compelling enough for me to be like, hey, I'm going to watch it as it airs. Okay. So if you put on good programming that makes people want to tune in, they're going to. Because I will tune in if it's something important, I promise you. Um, so yeah, is that it? It was at the numbers where they, where they were looking for better results from Scott? Because you can see a world where they're like, why are you asking us for more money? But the, num- the numbers are going down. You know, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I, you know, I, right before I get into my thoughts on the rebrand, I've been mentioning this a little bit that the, the big podcasters, um, Solo Monster and JD from NY and Cornette, who I like very much. <laughs> Most of you probably hate him, but I love him. Um, guys who do not watch TNA and haven't watched it in years, they've all got these uploads online of here's my thoughts. Like I mentioned on one of my previous uploads that I got into it with JD from NY a little bit on his channel because he did this whole 20-minute podcast about Scott being fired and He's saying, I don't even watch TNA and I'm definitely not going to watch it now. And I'm like, oh, that's what pushed you over the edge. You know, I basically said you're you're posting this video for the YouTube revenue because it's going to get you clicks. He's all I'm covering it because it has to do with wrestling. I'm like, fucking bullshit. What you're saying is not uh, genuine. And he I don't even dislike the dude. I listen to his podcast, but I mean, I, I don't listen to it that much. I would say every couple months I'll tune into an episode. Um, he did, he did another one. He read the Scott, the more letter, you know, and I'm not going to get on there and beat a dead horse again. You guys are welcome to, of course, but you know, and I did the same thing on Cornette's channel. Um, a couple other channels. I'm like, you guys are just talking about this for the, the clicks, which I understand that's the game, right? That's a, the digital media game is to, to get clicks and get views. Obviously I'm in that same game, but you don't see me on here talking about the Vince McMahon scandal or about Cody or the rock because I don't cover the companies. I don't watch them. So why am I going to talk about them? You know? So my whole point on these channels is like, you guys are not genuine. You're just acting outraged because you want people to watch and subscribe. You know, I've, um, yeah, there's sometimes I do uploads that are for new viewers, but for the most part, I try to maintain my integrity and everything that I do. It is not the popular thing to cover impact and TNA because the audience has never been big enough to really justify doing it because you don't get the views and the subs and, and everything, which I've grown this channel pretty well, you know, despite these things. My point in talking about all that, though, is that I hope you guys do appreciate the the integrity I've maintained in, in covering this company because you know, I've never had a thousand viewer podcast before. When I mean a podcast, I mean a a show review, an actual review of Impact. I've had the high 900s before, uh, years ago, when it was on Pop TV and there's triple the audience, but I've never hit a thousand. But that hasn't really stopped me from doing what I do. And, you know, I even do a little NWA stuff on here as well, uh, since I rebranded my channel. Um, But I try to talk about what I care about rather than, um, hey, let me get my ad revenue up. So let's talk about this rebrand now that I've given you a 14 minute intro. We're going to talk about first what has changed. And if I miss something on here, you can let me know. Uh, but I think I've got everything. Uh, the first thing I have here is the uh, the camera angles. We are not looking at the entrance ramp, which is a uh, something that the fans hate. The majority of the fans, especially when it's a bad crowd. Because there's been times where we see eight people on the screen. And uh, so far, everything has been showing the, the panned, the, the landscape view of the, the audience. And um, it looks much, much better. So we have improved camera angles. We've seen it in Las Vegas. We've seen it in Orlando. We don't know if this is going to be consistent or not. But that is something that so far they have changed. The entrance tunnel, I think there's two issues that people have with it. One, that there's not one on each side. 
and one that you can see through it and you can see the wrestlers <laughs> as they're walking through. I think the tunnel is a very, very nice touch despite those things. Um, I have no real issues with them. Obviously, obviously the logo has changed. Uh, the color schemes and the ropes. I enjoy the yellow ropes quite a bit. Yellow is my favorite color. I have nothing against red. My Los Angeles Angels are red. My LA Clippers in the past were red. Um, my Indiana Fever alternate jersey is red. But it was just the overkill. And now there's some color contrast, which I'm extremely happy about. They've changed the ring announcer. I have been asking for them to get rid of David Penzer for about four years. And uh, Jay Chung is filling in nicely. I think she's going to improve over time. Uh, she has, she does some announcements better than others, but she sound, you know, I, I do feel she tries to deliver everybody differently to where my issue with Penzer was always that everyone gets the same ring announcement. Everyone gets the same entrance. Uh, doesn't matter. Jobber, main or venter. It was always the same. Um, and you mix that in with the colors. You know, mixing with the colors and the, the, the blandness, everything just always felt the same watching the show. Also, they have her on screen, which she's obviously much better to look at than David Penzer, but she, she's on the screen doing the, the ring announcements. The only change I would make in her right now, which she seems to be improving, but the first couple episodes, she would be on screen announcing the wrestler and then turning her head towards the wrestler as they're walking up the screen. I mean, excuse me, rock walking up the stage rather than just looking at the camera. Um, but, but I think there's been some Im improvements with that, but I've been happy uh, with her job so far. There's been improved. I've been writing their social media for God knows how long since the beginning, since, uh, since I started doing this and there's definite imp improvements when they were promoting hard to kill. I, th I thought they did an excellent job. And then I got on here and said, but next thing we know, they're going to upload Taya Valkyrie versus Deanna Perrazzo. And the next day, that's exactly what they did. So um, that's a strategy they're, they're not going to get away from. And I'm not, I would never tell them to completely get away from it. But I, as I've said a hundred times, more than a hundred times, Jesus Christ, a thousand times, it's a bad look fishing for clicks when you're a wrestling company. I just, first and foremost, if you look at the engaging content they did but during Hard to Kill on Twitter, the engagement is twice what posting Samoa Joe winning the world title was. You know, because that, that's what people told me. Well, look, look at the likes and the retweets. Like, But what is that doing for the current product? And then, surprise, surprise, they do some engaging content the next few weeks, and it's blowing that Samoa Joe shit out the water. So there's improvements with social media. Um, it's it's probably never going to get to where I would like to see it get to, but there's improvements. So at the end of the day, uh, I, I guess that's it's a win for me. The vignettes, the backstage, uh, or not the backstage, but just the overall vignettes they've been doing. The stuff they did for Ash by Elegance. Uh, they did something for Rhino on screen a couple weeks ago, which I don't particularly love Rhino, but... I think he's a pretty good talker when they let him talk, and uh, that looked pretty good as well. So, and so some of the production value, as far as that goes, seems seems improved. So they, they've been doing some some uh, good vignettes. I wrote here fresh matchups. I know that Tom Hannafin likes to let you know first time ever matchup, and he says it ten times an episode, or at least. And I think myself and some followers talked him out of that. Um, even though they were doing a lot of first-time matchups, it didn't feel fresh at the same time. You know, they would be doing a couple of dudes, and it's, you know, Tom C. here's first time they've ever, you know, met up, but it just didn't feel that way. Everything just felt like something we'd seen before. And uh, right now, it just, I don't know what it is. I can't quite put my finger on it, but a lot of the matches just feel so much fresher. 
and maybe it's just the overall atmosphere, you know, it, the, the shows are not quite as dark and dreary and as they were before. Um, maybe it's the fact that it's not pointed out to us every single time, but I do think the booking has been a little fresher. Um, they're leaning into a couple bad habits, but I think overall it's, it's been fresh. It just feels different. And I guess it has to do with like, you know, they, they did that X division six way that Jake something won on the first episode. He wouldn't have won that match three months ago. You know, uh, Kushido, I think Kushida was in it. Uh, he would have won, you know, it would have been someone not from the company, but now looking back at it, that match meant nothing. It wasn't a f- number one contender match or anything. So that's why he won. And and they have a history. Um, within that same vein, they've kept Josh Alexander out of the title picture. And he's wrestling uh, matches with guys lower in the card, but it doesn't feel like a, a demotion at the same time. So that's been very fresh too. Ever since he's been a baby face, he has been wrestling for titles. Well, shit, when he was a heel, part of the North, like all he ever has done is wrestle for fucking titles or be right there. Um, we're starting to see a little bit of a different size. And I, I challenged them to make him compelling in a storyline that didn't have to do with his wife. You know, don't use that crutch. And I think they've stepped up a little bit with that. Um, just the, you know, even the little thing with Alan Angels and we'll see what this Simon Gotch stuff does. People think it's long-term booking. <laughs> I guess it is technically, but they're keeping them out of the title picture. And I think that's fresh as well. There's been some improved editing as far as the cuts and transitions go. They're not doing the video game sound between every freaking segment. They still might do a sound between every segment now, but, but it's not as, it's it just smoother, quieter, and you don't really notice it. Uh, so that's been nice as well. They've got the new intro, you know, bringing back the Cross the Line song. We've finally uh, retired Wheel in the Night, which haunted my dreams. Um, turned them into nightmares for years. Uh, I was so, th- there was a point I I really questioned if I could watch the show anymore. I know it sounds really dramatic, but you guys remember there was, there was a period where they played it nonstop throughout the show. They They would do the intro and then they would maybe do a backstage segment and continue to play the song. And it's sitting here running for four or five minutes at a time. And then, uh, then they go to a uh, commercial and they play it on the way out of the commercial. And then they play it on the way in from the commercial. Um, it was nonstop. You know, they, they improved that over time, but it was absolutely fucking nonstop. And then explosion explosion is back. Explosion has been better than the old explosion. It is definitely better than before the impact. They've added two matches to it, which I think makes it a little more, uh, entertaining gives people more reasons to watch the GM Miller interviews. I think are very no bueno. Um, I do want to, I do want to get to know the wrestlers a little bit, but I don't care like what their favorite color is and what they eat for breakfast. And, you know, are they a dog or cat person? Like that's a little, like a little much. I don't care. I, I've been watching recently that the, the Wrestlers on Netflix, the OC, uh, OCD, <laughs> the OCD, um, OVW show, and they were doing. You know, the episode I just watched was was talking to Shira, and I said, "Man, I would love this kind of feel uh, for some of the TNA talent, so we could get to know them." So, I have no problem with some lighthearted questions, but I wish there was at least one question at the end that we could really like sink our teeth into. And there just hasn't been, but um, it is something that is imp- improved from what they were doing before. So, you know, it's still explosion still gets a thumbs up. I like the the graphics and all that. I, it still gets a thumbs up for me. What has not changed. Uh, this is very few things in comparison. To what I just said has changed the backstage lighting. I talk about this every podcast that I review impact. Um, and I probably will continue to because it continues to look like shit. And they disagree clearly uh, that that is how they're going to present these. 
And um, I guess we just got to suck it up. There's some of you, many of you probably don't care. Uh, um, but I care. I think they look awful. And while Gia is an improved interviewer, she's starting to become, um, I don't know, just always standing there with the dough and the headlights look, doing the interviews and everything. And then she starts to be part of the gimmick a little bit. I'll, I'll talk about that more on the Ash by Elegance when I review Impact so you know, understand what I'm talking about. But um, these the backstage interviews stink. Uh, the, the crowds are still dark. We can't see them. And there's people there. That's the crazy thing. I don't know what look they're going for. I know when they were in the impact zone in Orlando, we were very focused on the crowd because there's people talking to one another back. You know, the ones standing it would have their back to the action because they're talking to someone, people on their phones. Uh, we could see people sitting on their hands. So I guess I get that to an extent, but that's not what this fan base is now. This fan base is much more engaged than previously. Uh, we want to see them and we don't, we can't. And, and then when you when you mix in the way that they mix uh, mix with the color levels, you really can't see them because that's the next thing on my next on my list is to cover the color levels. It's when you go into post editing and you have to sharpen things up, which you should do. Um, but with the backstage segments and the in ring stuff, there is a um, when you go to your color levels, there is a setting that actually I think is called levels or color levels. And if you drag the cursor down to the floor, it is it makes all the blacks even darker and blend in with one another. And that's what they're doing. They're continuing to do it. They think it looks good. It doesn't. And it wasn't as obvious to me when they were in Las Vegas because the venue was so nice. And um, I think with the the contrast of the yellow ropes and just seeing yellow out there, it it doesn't look as bad. Uh, but it still is bad. Like this this past episode, Rich Swan came out. And he, I mean, he was just like, he was wearing a black shirt. He's black. The The crowd was black. Um, it's it's like you almost couldn't see him. And that's why you don't mess with that with that level to where you make all blacks equal. Uh, all, all, I don't want to say shades of black. Um, I don't know if there is shades, but it, it it just brings the the background closer to the front, the front closer to the back, and everything just blends in with one another. And you guys... Uh, I've, I'm starting to see a lot of you on social media pointed out as well. Like when AJ Francis did his interview backstage, his beard completely blended into the background. All you could see was his face. Uh, former WWE stars in the title picture. I was kind of under the impression they were going to back off that a little bit, especially when Nick, Nem Nick Nemeth wasn't going for the title immediately, which he will. Trust me, he's going to be done with Macklin and he's going to wrestle for the title. Trust me, he, he's, he will wrestle for the title at Rebellion. Um, but you have Mustafa Ali coming in for his first match wrestling for the X division title will probably win it. Uh, the grizzled young vets coming in immediately wrestling for the championships will probably win them. Um, you're bringing Ash by elegance in to face Jordan grace. She will probably win as well because, uh, I I'm fairly certain her feud at first feud is going to be for the title. And, I think they've invested a lot in, in her. And I think I maybe you guys don't agree with me. I think she was the big signing that Scott teased. And um, for that reason, I put the belt on her sooner than later. So we're kind of seeing the same old, same old, you know, old habits never change. You wrestled in WWE, come in and uh, beat our guys and our girls and, and win gold. And then, um, you know, formerly, I mean, <sighs> Formerly, I was reading something else I wrote. Lastly, the viewership. The viewership has not improved. And it's very possible that they're, in, you know, because they're in less homes now, that plays into it. But we're not getting the bump we were hoping for. We're seeing the social media numbers go up. Um, and But some of those are fa aren't, aren't real. Like when you're posting the AJ Styles matches and people want to see old AJ Styles matches so they subscribe, those are, those are not real. Those are very empty clicks. Um, they're empty calorie clicks because they do nothing uh, for your, your, you know, your current product. And um, when you build a channel of subscribers of people who don't care about the core of what you're doing, 
it actually hurts your your channel very very much and that's one of the reasons i just begged them not to do that uh when you upload the same video twice youtube does pick up on that and they penalize you when you do that so there's just a lot of practices they use on um youtube that that hurt them but even though we're seeing those numbers go up we're just not seeing the viewership and the, and the, the live audience um or the live viewers you know like watching in real time as the show airs we're just not seeing improvements there um but we've seen some improvements with with the ultimate insider just based on the the engagement you see in, in the episodes and uh, i guess one thing i didn't talk about was impact plus being tna plus just because i don't have the app but people have been saying pretty good things about it so you know we'll see maybe i'll get into it here, here soon so thanks for rocking with me guys again i got no idea how the audio came out on this i hope it was clear enough uh to where you guys could enjoy the show but you know definitely leave your thoughts engage with each other in the comments and um you know just kind of discuss what you think is working not working has it been a good rebrand that that's where we're at i don't think it's been a bad one but i don't think they went all in enough because as every episode passes i do think it's feeling like another episode of impact uh, and when I say that, I mean from the Impact era, not the TV show. It's it's more and more feeling like the Impact TV show. But they, I think they've made enough changes where it also kind of feels fresh at the same time. But they just didn't go all the way. And and it, I don't think they're far off from doing that. You just got to have some people that want to, uh, that care, that are self-aware enough to say, hey, this doesn't look good. This doesn't sound good. This needs to change. This needs to improve. You know, there's there's a lot that they did address, but they have not gone all the way. They need to go all the way. I'm not as optimistic without Scott Demore there, but at the same time, maybe Scott was the one who liked the way the show looked. Maybe he said, "Hey, fuck with the levels. That looks awesome." Maybe it was him. Maybe Anthem comes in and uh, changes that. You know, I don't know, but uh, that'll do it for me, guys. I will be um, reviewing the show here in a couple hours. So I will talk to you then. Peace.